This week marks 200 days. 200 days. That you've been in office. Yeah. Mary, it's been a pretty eventful 200 days. It Did you have any idea it would be this eventful? Uh, no, but then right. nobody in our community or anywhere yeah. knew that we'd have such an eventful 2020, of course. Um, it's been an incredible 200 days, not what I imagined it would be, although it was new, so yeah. didn't know what to imagine. Did you have any expectations? Um, I mean, you've been in city government. I've been in city government. I did. Yeah. I mean, I was so excited. Well, first I should say I was so honored to ha like, have the trust of the community and then so excited to get to work, which we did. Mm -hmm. I mean, right away we had the basics of just getting to know the office and getting to know the staff at the city. And I spent a lot of time visiting with people um, that work for our city that are committed to serving our residents. Um, but then of course, I think it was day 53 or day 55, suddenly we were in a different world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so what was important to me when I came into this role was to address the issues that our residents said were really important which was to come up with solutions more urgently for affordable housing, to address economic opportunity and the wages we have here, and to figure out how we reduce traffic and congestion. That's changed a little bit since yeah. so many people are working at home, um, but we've remained focused on that while juggling like, public health and a pandemic. So uh, that was gonna be one of my questions, COVID-19. I mean, it has seemed to consume our world, really every corner of it. So your office is still able to focus on other areas of governing, even in this pandemic? Oh yes, and I mean, so it's it's a juggling act, it is. just like everything else in life is. We have to, and I've said all along that our success will be based on taking care of people. And so we have to think about public health, the economic crisis, but at the same time, to be poised to recover well, we have to stay focused on the task at hand, which is making sure that we protect what we love about this community and to address the real needs that were clear before the election and now even more so with the pandemic and the crisis that's, that's ensued. Yeah. So 200 days, still in your infancy as mayor. What have you enjoyed most though so far? Well, so somebody accidentally said yesterday 200 years and we realized <laughs> we're like, oh, it almost feels like that. Right? <laughs> uh, the, what I've enjoyed most has really been, it's different because things are, were separated from people mm -hmm. Um, I do a lot of um, connecting with residents and organizations online. Um, but what I've enjoyed most is the recognizing that there is a deep responsibility to this community that comes with this position and being able in new ways to continue connecting with residents who are so committed mm -hmm. to their families and their community and to helping get through this crisis and figuring out how with our great team at the city of Boise, we can be helpful. Given everything that's happened in 2020, are you still happy that you ran for mayor? Do you regret it at all? I, I don't regret it. Um, it's so different than any of us would have imagined, but it's an incredible honor to be at this place at this moment when so much of us, so much is demanded of us. Mm -hmm. And I feel called every day that I get up to think about and to act on um, what we must do to ensure that our community stays intact and that we recover more resiliently than before. When you Google your name, I uh -oh. did this last night just for fun. <laughs> the city's website comes up, your campaign website, your Twitter handle, some Wikipedia, and then news about the petition to recall yeah. the mayor. Does that bother you? Do you take that personally? You can't take things personally in a position like this. And the more people try to make things personal, um, the more of a disservice we're doing for our community. This is about, in my mind, filling the role of the office and doing what I have to do in this moment to protect our health, to ensure our economy recovers and we can um, have a community that remains united where people have the opportunity that they deserve. If you take the recall effort personally, does that bother you? You know, I remain focused on the job that I'm here to do mm -hmm. and I can't take these things personally. I am filling the role of the office of mayor and the more people in our community attempt to make these things personal, the more of a disservice we're doing to our community because we have to stay focused 
on what brought me to this office, but ultimately on what we need to do to take care of our residents. Are you worried, are you afraid that the recall effort will be successful and that you'll be recalled? It's happened before, although Mayor Coles resigned, not saying it's similar situations at all, yeah. but there has been recall efforts in the past. Um, are, you, are you ever afraid, up at night thinking, what if they're successful? I stay up at night if I'm up at night thinking about the steps I have to take to protect our community and to address the economic crisis at hand. I don't know these folks mm -hmm. that are taking these actions, haven't had a conversation with them. I am committed to not being distracted and remaining focused on the job that I was put here yeah. in January to do. Are you open to having a conversation with them? Have they ever reached out to you? I love having conversations with all people and hearing and understanding where people are coming from, I'm always open to that. And before COVID shut down City Hall, I would have open office hours and constituent hours. And now what I do is um, schedule constituents to have phone conversations and Zoom meetings. Okay. Do you think you're just simply misunderstood by these people? <sighs> That's a great question. And, and it's hard for me to answer that because yeah. I don't want to speak for them. Okay. But what I do know is that the residents of Boise at the end of last year made very clear twice that they trusted me to enact and make good on a vision of a city for everyone. And that's what I've been doing since January 7th. And we've had things come up, a pandemic, um, the tough, tough days that our communities experience and where people have sacrificed. And I remain focused on that vision of a city for everyone, creating economic opportunity, which is more important now than ever, addressing affordable housing to make sure that everybody in this community can find a home they can afford mm -hmm. and build the life that we all want to build. If perhaps they're misunderstanding you, what is it that you want people to know about you? Um, I want people to know that I am that person, the very person that they know me to be, saw me to be in the last year. Um, for 20, over 20 years, I've worked to protect this community from um, leading the first effort to protect our foothills to working on clean air and water issues and ultimately as a city council person championing issues that were really important this, in this community. I love this place. There's no place I'd rather be. Um, and I think daily about the role and responsibility I have to protect it and the steps that I'm going to take with my team mm -hmm. to make good on that. The opposition, and I'm sorry to keep bringing this up, but it is it is somewhat surprising, you know, um, and maybe it's just the climate that we're in right now. Everything seems to be so political. Do you think it, it has to do at all with the fact that you're female, that you're the first elected female to be mayor of Boise? You know, that's hard for me to know, but I do know that around the country right now, many female mayors are being recalled. And it could be a sign of the times, it could be a sign of the politics, um, but it's, you know, it's a unique role that we that we play um, as female mayors, um, trying to juggle the, the dual expectations of yeah. being the executive and like, being the, the approachable mom. And so how you combine those two is tough. I'm sure that you've experienced yeah. the same thing. I know that Dr. Trump has, other reporters in this community have, um, the gender-based attacks, and then nationally we see women being recalled. Yeah. So is that something obviously you're probably proud of to be the first elected female mayor? Is that a title that you like or would you rather just be mayor? It actually makes me feel even more responsible for doing a really good job. But I think often of Carolyn Turtling Payne, who was the first female mayor of Boise, not elected, but she filled in when her community needed her to solve a problem, which is what we often do as women. And I, I do think a lot about the um, importance of sharing the role with young girls, young women, um, talking with them about the importance of being engaged in your community and leading where your passion lies. Mm -hmm. um, and so see, see my position as that first female elected mayor is also um, one of being role model for many people in this community. I've interviewed Dr. Trump before. She's amazing. She um, and I, I often look up to female leaders and wondering how in the world do you do it? So what, what are some secrets? How do you, how have you been managing the, the work life balancing act? How have you been juggling that? Sure. And there's also the piece too of not just um, managing and juggling work life balance, but finding leaders that you respect mm -hmm. to build relationships with. So I really cherish the relationship I have with Dr. Trump mm -hmm. um, and find that I learn things from her every time we talk. 
Um, I look for other female leaders in this community and around the country to build relationships with and learn from to create that support network. Mm -hmm. But of course, I wouldn't be able to do any of this without my husband, who mm -hmm. is an amazing partner and an incredible father, and my kids, who are really a big part of this too. And so, like every person that has to juggle family and work, we figure it out. Running mm -hmm. is important to me. I get out early in the morning. Um, to run out some of that energy that uh, needs to go somewhere um, and then center myself at home with my family in the evenings. You mentioned Dr. Trump. Is there anyone else kind of in your circle of trust friends, girlfriends or whatever, any, any other mentors? I have a great group of women friends who I met. You know, we all um, either came home or came um, chose this place over 20 years ago and we've had kids together and mm -hmm. they really are, and our kids are like cousins um, and they they create a great support network separate um, and second to my family. Um, and then I do, I, um, I really, Wendy Jaquit, a former legislator in Ketchum, was an early, early mentor of mine, has always encouraged me. Mary Lou Reed in North Idaho, also um, an early mentor of mine and a former state senator here in the state. Of course, there are great local leaders mm -hmm. that I connect with often. Um, and have sought out and built relationships with um, several women mayors around the country. Okay. Um, let's talk about masks. We were we were both wearing we masks. We both had them on. Yes, we both had them on, but now we're My able daughter to... daughter made this one for me, <laughs> or actually for her. I took it this morning. Sorry, Madeline. <laughs> so you took a lot of flack when you mandated the masks for the city of Boise, even though other cities had done it statewide. Protesters even stood outside your home. Um, what was that like for you? What was that like for your family? I think I saw one picture on Twitter. A guy had a pitchfork. Yeah. What was that like? Um, I will say first and foremost that business leaders and the leaders of the hospitals said to me, somebody has to act now or it's going to get worse. And that was enough for me. We knew that it would give energy to opposition, but we knew that it was the right thing to do. and. So together with council members, we did not you know, run away from that. Mm -hmm. And we passed the mask ordinance, which now we're seeing a slight leveling of cases. Um, and I will not ever um, be made to be fearful or run away from the responsibility I have to protect public health and to protect the residents of our community. And the mask ordinance was the next step that we had to take. Um, what that's meant with people showing up at my house, um, having to close my drapes so that you know my, my kids and my family can have a bit of normalcy has been tough. But I'll say that the reaction I've had from my neighbors, it has brought our block even closer together where we celebrate together as often as we can. We check in on each other. Um, the positive response I've gotten from people throughout this city um, to it, recognizing that this isn't what Boiseans do, um, has really actually lifted me up and helped me and my family and my team mm -hmm. of staff who also like see it and are impacted mm -hmm. by it, recognize that there are many more people in this community that value the steps we've taken, that appreciate the efforts we've made, um, and feel for us mm -hmm. in a sense of knowing that this is happening weekly. Are you ever concerned for your safety or the, your family's safety? Um, that's, it's been such an interesting experience to be honest because um, I think the, my chief of staff and um, Jim Schiffler, the downtown officer who's known me forever would say that's not something I've ever thought about. And now I do have to think about it, but I still feel that it, at the root of everything, Boise is still Boise. Mm -hmm. This is a safe place to be. Um, the community of residents looks out for each other. And I still love every moment I have being outside, out and about, grocery shopping, walking downtown, and being in the foothills, being on the green belt, and feeling as I always have. How do you stay focused then with all this distraction? We've kind of talked a little bit about it, but running, how do you stay focused? Yeah, you know, I, somebody asked me that once and I, my answer was, I just stay focused. <laughs> um, the, I, 
I've learned that there are many distractions oh, all yeah. the time, right? And you're a runner. Like mm -hmm. when you're running, especially on a trail, so therapeutic. you could, it's therapeutic, but you could also get tripped by a rock. Yeah. You could run into a log, but at the, at, a biker like, could come up and, right, <laughs> yeah. and you have to stop for a moment, but you know where you're going yeah. and you know, you're going to get there mm -hmm. and everything else is just extra. And that's really how, um, I think what guides me is that like what I've learned from being a runner and what I've learned from over 20 years of working on issues in this community when it's and state when it's not always easy is that you have a goal in mind you work towards it yeah. and then everything else is just a part of the journey okay calls to defund the police the protest outside city hall um, you caught a little bit of flack from that too when you said and you seem to put the blame on all the counter protesters. This was the one in June, the protest in June. The next day, the union came out and said, Boise Police Union came out and said, actually, we think it was both sides instigating. Any response to that? We have always had a right in our country to stand up, assemble, speak out mm -hmm. peacefully. And there are open investigations. Arrests have been made related to the violence of that evening. And I thought it was very important to recognize that the event that night was not indicative of people of our community. And it's not something I ever want to see in our community. So working with our new police chief, we took a very different approach um, for the second time around. Um, so you're, you're all in support of protest, that's First Amendment right. You're, all, you're, all, you're not trying to call for an end to the protesting, okay. No, and our goal, and I believe that Chief Lee did an incredible job mm -hmm. with the police force on the 21st is to create a safe environment mm -hmm. and to ensure that those who do show up looking for violence or to instigate violence are like stopped right away mm -hmm. so that those who are showing up to speak their truths have the protection that they are owed um, to to make good on the promise that we have as Americans, which is to protest. Your budget actually is going to increase the, the police department's budget. Um, you're calling for five more officers. Will you call for some of the, the things that the Black Lives Matter group is calling for in terms of maybe more mental health training and, and trying to focus more air, more money on those areas as well within the police department? Or what, what's that gonna look yes, like in and the future? Yes, and it's important to recognize that um, there is a role for police officers mm -hmm. and public safety in our community because we have to be safe. And then there are so many other unmet needs that can really prevent the need for policing over time. We funded in my budget for 2021, the police department as the police department requested. Okay. And Chief Lee is looking at how to allocate the new officers to meet several demands of the community, which include the need for more patrol, because as we grow, yep. There's not as much enforcement on the street, many more, um, related to traffic. And then also the, the need to respond in new and different ways to the growing number of mental health and addiction related calls. Mm -hmm. Speaking of the new police chief, he came from Portland. There are accusations, you wanna make Boise the new Portland. Do you wanna make Boise the new Portland? I love Boise for what she is. Um, I and my husband were very intentional in choosing this place, leaving our family behind and choosing this place in our early 20s. And my job is to protect what we love about this place and keep Boise Boise. Mm -hmm. and that's what I'm here to do. And that was part of your platform, part it of your was. campaign message. I was it looking was. last night, keep Boise yeah. Boise. And we're hearing many of the same things now that we heard in the final three weeks of the campaign leading to the second election. Mm -hmm. And then, as now, I was very clear, like, I am here because I love the singular community we have, the people that make this community who she is and the place in which we live, mm -hmm. and my job is to protect that. Do you have a favorite thing about Boise? So, I mean, there's so much There's so much, and, some, and we were in this group, we were doing this team building exercise with department leaders, and we were supposed to talk about what makes Boise, Boise. And for me, it's so hard to describe because Boise is, is just, mm -hmm. it, like, it puts a smile on my face. I know, face. me too. Um, we live in such a special, unique community, and I am daily grateful for it. What I love about this place is the fact that anyone that wants to get involved in something they care about can mm -hmm. and will, um, that you can come here um, 
either because you grew up here, went away for a while and want to come back, or you can come here as someone new, mm -hmm. um, be welcomed with open arms and build a life here. You look like I you're almost getting love, choked up. I am. <laughs> I love being in the foothills. Mm -hmm. And um, on hot days, as lately, I've enjoyed being on the Greenbelt and then at the end of my run, jumping in the river and just watching people love this place. Yeah. Back to some negative. You've been called a socialist. Are you a socialist? I am a Boisean who believes that government can do good. And at a time like this especially, we need to take action to protect our residents and create opportunity in partnership um, with businesses and others. Mm -hmm. um, this is a nonpartisan seat. And I believe that solutions in cities are you know, idea-based and rely on people getting engaged and helping us move forward on a vision. Let's talk about, you're talking about action. Um, yesterday, your office released, I think it was yesterday, maybe two days ago, again, the world just all, <laughs> um, the strategic plan, and you had a lot of goals. If you had to pick just three for perhaps maybe the next year, um, what would be your top three priorities? Sure. And, and in that, we wanted to release what we're working on for the next six months so that the public knows what's happening um, through all of this right mm -hmm. now. My top three goals are to protect public health and safety, to um, ensure that the city does all that we can do to support economic recovery, and then to address the need for um, affordable housing in our community. Economic recovery has been a little tough with COVID-19. Are we on a good track with Boise? What are you hearing from business leaders? Sure, um, this, everybody has experienced mm -hmm. hardship in the last three, four months, and we know it will last longer. But I'm hopeful because business leaders are coming together. And we established an economic recovery task force of leaders and university leaders, as well as think tanks to help us think about policies of the future to set us up to recover. And we're working with businesses throughout the community to create new patios and spaces mm -hmm. for small Street, businesses yeah. to move. And we wanna, we're expanding beyond that. Um, and then finding ways to partner with other agencies and organizations in this community to come up with innovative programs so that we can recover. And I would say too that it's really important to recognize that investments now, if they're done well, will help us recover more strongly in the future. Why sit down and do this interview with us? Because, you know, it's, it's, there's some contentious times out there right now. And um, I don't know, maybe why, why the opportunity? So, well, one, I appreciate the opportunity yeah. when asked to come. And, I, and, you know, I really enjoy talking with people in the community, um, sharing my love of this place, and then also helping our residents know what we're doing at City Hall in this time when it's harder to connect directly. Mm -hmm. um, the more we can talk, the better. Yeah. The transition report, I would be remiss if I didn't mention that. Are you just, again, is it, is it hard was it hard to kind of move on from that? And was it e were you easily distracted by it? Was it just a, bis much of, a bunch of misunderstanding? So but is there, there anything that you're gonna take from that transition report and move forward sure. on? So there were seven transition reports and 72 citizens that participated in those. And I believe deeply in hearing from people that I might not know mm -hmm. to learn things I might not otherwise have known. And the transition for me was an exercise in that, um, giving citizens space to share their ideas with me. The transition's over, and we have clear priorities that we are working on. Is that um, going to be sex some education of, in preschool? Some, <laughs> no. Um, some of those which were listed in the seven mm -hmm. transition reports, and you'll see that there are new housing policies that I'm bringing forward that we're building relationships to address transportation, um, that we're working with businesses and others to address economic opportunity. And we want to make a much more welcoming workforce and workplace mm -hmm. in City Hall. And from that report, I, I did take suggestions that we look at how we can um, welcome all comers as employees to the city and create an environment in which they want to work. So does that include free abortions? Does that include the sex ed in preschool? You know, there are many things that a city can't do, and many of which were contained in that report. Okay. I'm, I'm, anything else you want to mention? I just really appreciate the time to be here, and I guess I'd want to leave you with a reminder that these times are really tough, that we are being called upon as 
residents of this city and citizens of this nation to address more than we've ever had to address mm -hmm. at once. And I believe deeply in the power of community engagement and especially in this community where our residents love this place and her people so much, we need to come together and we will recover stronger for it. And I'm hopeful that out of this time, um, we will demonstrate what a resilient community that we are. Um, and I remain singularly focused on trying to do that, bringing people together, addressing the challenges at hand, seeing them as opportunities, and knowing in the long run, our community will be stronger.